Hey guys, Armageddon here today, talking about the Daniel Defense DD5. This is the V1 with the 16 inch barrel and 7.62, so or 308. So it'll just quickly prove clear. Oh, let it pop open. And today we're gonna do a field strip and discussion of the internals. So I'll pull it all apart and then I'll go over the internal features that make this thing really slick. So this will be part one of my video set on this gun. Part two will be a more complete just overview of the gun, some history of it, some specs on it, and I'll talk about this killer optic real quick as well in that video. And then the third day, I will actually take this thing out and do some shooting with it. So I've actually already done that, and I have to say I was a bit disappointed. The ammo I chose was clearly a very poor fit for this gun. I definitely got some rounds through it and got some shooting impressions, but unfortunately, it uh, it definitely did not go the way I hoped it would. Some issues with the mags, issues with this ammo. It was just not not a good day. Anyways, let's carry on with the uh, the field strip here. So we will pop out the rear pin. We'll drop the bolt first with the handy ambi bolt drop. Take a. Uh, A zoom snap cap, pop the pins, and for regular field strip maintenance, you don't need to pop both pins per se, but for these videos, I like to do that just because then I can show you the upper and lower more completely. And this front pin is tight, very tight. There we go. It's probably just binding up on me a little bit. Sometimes it helps to wedge the upper and lower apart a little bit just to give it a bit of play ah i got it started but it's still not wanting to come out on me here there we go i think i just had to have it vertical so the pressure was off the pins okay so so i can pop this mag out as well for now and i'll pop actually i'll just pop this optic off these arms levers make it pretty handy to do that now i'm just working with the gun itself, a little more convenient. So, let's take a look at the lower real quick. We've got the controls. You got a telescopic stock. This is the Daniel Defense factory furniture. It is quite nice. You see these nice rubberized textures and stuff in here. A nice little latch that's, it's low profile. There's no snag points on it. And you actually depress that in. Um, whereas, you know, traditional stocks had something that stuck out naturally. And you just depress it in to, to, uh, to actuate it. So, I like that, that they've designed this as a very high speed, low drag kind of affair, which is pretty cool. You got an ambi safety. I like that there's the minimalistic one on the, the other side, although it's a, I guess it's got a little bit of meat there. I'm struggling a little bit to actuate it. Usually when I drop the gun, I flip up and I, I catch that ambi safety with my trigger finger, flip it up. But the other thing is it only has 90 degrees safety. I do like the 45 degree throws, which really quickly I'll just grab. Hey, Robinson Armament XCR. These guys, apart from having just phenomenal ergs all the way around, they uh, have this nice little 45 degree short throw. They're small, small profile um, safeties. They don't get into the weight of your hand at all, but they're really, they got all that meat on them. They're really easy to flick back. So this is like my gold standard for ergonomics on a gun is the XCR series of rifles. <clears throat> But the DD5 still does really well. Daniel Defense is still pretty awesome, and, and these guns do function very. They've actually got a true, you know, bolt catch and release system in here, which is pretty, pretty nice to see. They were still one of the earlier guns to to do that in such a way that was, you know, this this effective. So I do, I don't, I, I don't like the paddle up here as much because it's a bit of a stretch to get up there to actuate it. It is really nice being able to pull the bolt back and just depress this and catch it, but it is it is nicer when they're located in the trigger well as they are with the XCR series. If you want to know more with the XCRs, I have a whole video set on those guys as well. Uh, please feel free to check that out. I'll leave a card up in the little clicker up here somewhere. So if you want to go check out those videos. Anyways, uh, nice ambi mag release, both sides, which is the definition of ambi, I guess. And uh, just that you get your buffer tube, of course, in there. Yeah, or that is your buffer tube, sorry. Just get your buffer 
buffer and your buffer spring. So I'll drop the lower for now. Oh, actually, one of the most important things here is the trigger. And the trigger is pretty phenomenal. It is a Geisley SSA, I believe, two stage. So quite a nice trigger. I'll do a trigger pull. I'll do a trigger pull when I when I put this thing back together and do the function check. So now the upper. Well, the upper is uh, I'm focusing too much on the external things. I will talk about the external things in the overview video. We'll talk about the internal things here. So mainly there we've got the bolt carrier. And I'll also show you the charging handle because there's something very unique about that. There is no latch. There instead is this ball bearing detent. So we have a very, very falling apart bear bolt carrier group, apparently. Um, this thing is actually really slick, really high quality. It's all chrome plated. You get your serrations for your forward assist. And your firing pins are just falling all over the place. Um, the cool thing with this gun is what a lot of, it's kind of happened with the AR-10s first, the higher end AR-10s, LMT and Knights, they do captured or uh, captive uh, firing pin retaining pins, which is really nice to see. I, this is just, when you're taking apart a bolt care group, it's really handy not to have to dig that little cotter pin out and then drop it or lose it or, you know. So that's nice that that's just captive, not gonna go anywhere on you. So you can drop your firing pin then you can drop your uh, your cam pin here. Once I rotate it enough to get to clear the gas block or the uh, the gas key, which is uh, this guy, by the way. Usually, you always want to see that those are nicely staked or otherwise very firmly attached. There's your cam pin and your bolt. The bolt, I'll come back to the carrier. Well, the carrier is chrome lined all inside as well, or chrome plated. Really nice. What well, this is just in durability enhancement. Very easy to clean. Grime just rubs right off, which is always, always nice. Makes clean up that much easier. And then the bolt here, we will, the eight lug design, typical of AR-15s. And you've got the, you know, hefty claw extractor here which is quite easy to disassemble. You just push push this pin through and then this whole assembly pops off. And these dual ejectors. Now, dual ejectors, when you have a 7.62 cartridge, it's, it's quite a hefty cartridge. And for reliability of the firearm, you wanna get that spent brass out really quickly before you uh, get a new one in there. So, you know, 308 is really high chamber pressure and just, you know, they got a really hefty claw here to really extract that round from the chamber. These just help fire it out of the way. Make sure it's non-issue. So that's uh, that's good. There's more and more companies are switching to these dual ejectors in their AR-10 platforms. And it's also handy for SBR platforms because again, higher higher chamber pressures yet. Sometimes with the dwell time in the in the barrel that, that further you have to really crank up the uh, you know, the, the carrier, the pressure in the, in the action to, uh, to, to run it. So you'll get higher cycling speeds. And those higher cycling speeds, if the bolt, if everything's cycling back and forth that much faster, you really need to get the brass out before the next one picks up a new round. Otherwise you're gonna have um, stove pipes, double feeds, things like that. So this way, this way you got the double dual ejectors and it's, it's really kind of taking care of that. So uh, again, Three gas rings back here. This is a as this is a DI platform. Your bolt's gonna have gas rings. And what else can I tell you? The charging handle. It's actually I'm not a morning person, and I'm doing this video in the morning because I got to travel right away here. And I I'm actually I sold this buddy to, this rifle to a friend, and I'm gonna be taking it to him today. So it's kind of my last opportunity to uh, get a handle on the rifle. So I'm doing this thing freaking early in the morning, as soon as the sun was up, and I'm uh, I'm. Running a bit slow and talking a bit slow, so anyways, I do apologize. But this is their proprietary charging handle, and it's got this detent, which is pretty interesting. I uh, haven't seen that before. They were the pioneers of that. You can see there's a little recess in the top of the receiver, and their idea behind that was not chewing up the, uh, I, guess, I guess, you know, durability issues long-term, the traditional, traditional, Charging handle latches, you know, they're steel latched riding on an aluminum part or a little ledge there. Lots of times that means they're going to chew it up over time. 
And Daniel Defense had this kind of interesting system. The only problem is it's then proprietary. And like these arms, you can, they're kind of small for my personal taste, but you can actually, you could buy extensions that made them longer, either on one side or both. And I don't know, I just, I personally don't like this a lot. There's a, quite a bit of initial pressure there, initial tension on pulling this out then. Already you have to overcome the, you know, the hefty 308, which they've actually crammed 308 into a pretty decently small buffer tube there. So I, uh, I, I want to grab my SIG Rattler really quick here and show you what SIG did, because I do think SIG had the better solution. SIG installed, you can see right there, just a little, a little steel pin that's taking all the brunt of that, uh, that latch. So the latch isn't rubbing on an aluminum shelf that was machined in there. Instead, it's got actually a little, a little steel pin uh, on both sides because there's it's got dual latches there. So that I thought was really, really slick. This gun again as well, I'll throw another card up here and you can go check out uh, my videos on this guy as well. I don't have a shooting video on this one yet, but it will be coming soon. So I uh, will just drop that for now. And what else about this gun? It is a really nice weapons platform. I do really appreciate it. I have to say that just for a 308, I've yet to try the POF Revolution, but otherwise this is an AR-10 that actually feels like an AR-15. It's, it's pretty slick. And when I did my shooting video, this gun was essentially brand new. I wanted to keep it nice for my buddy, so I just threw some duct tape on there so it didn't chew up the ejection port. Again, another thing that SIG did well, they have a steel piece that's replaceable in there. So if you get it shot up or it wears down by brass hitting it, which never is really going to happen. It's kind of just a cosmetic thing, but ah, for SIG, you can replace it. So um, again, I'll talk about the other external features like this four bolt system here and on my, on my main overview, which I will post tomorrow. And that'll, that'll be that. So I think I've already running this video long enough. It's just a standard procedure to put this thing back together. So I will leave that as is. And... And yeah, oh, uh, other, other question or the other thing here. Um, this is a standard AR-10 profile lower, which is supposed to fit with other AR-10, like um, the, the Knight's, Knight's Stoner, basically the Stoner design. So if you've got an SR-25, theoretically it should fit. I haven't tried that, um, but I might. You know what, once I, once I wrap up and close my video, I'll go grab my Stoner and I will throw this on there kind of as some bonus content of the extra. It's gonna be a bit slow and a bit dragging on, so I'll do the main sign off first here. Thank you guys a ton for checking this out. Please go see me on Instagram at arm.am.gun. I've been posting there for a few years, post every day, lots of cool stuff. You can see other stuff in my collection. My intention is to catalog my entire collection on YouTube with these disassembly and interior or um, internals overviews, the external overviews and like a gun overviews, histories of the gun, things like that, and then shooting videos for all as well. So when I go on there and check it out, engage with my profile, I uh, I respond to comments pretty frequently and I, I sometimes my DM inbox gets backed up, but I do clear it out uh, periodically. So feel free to leave me a message or whatever, ask me a question, drop any comments below. And uh, thanks a lot guys. And now I will grab my Knight's SR25 ECC upper and throw it on this guy and see if it fits. Oh shoot, she's right at the back too. That's a drag. Instead of doing this, I will add the video here and I will splice the other one in. All right, guys, got my ECC upper here. I'm just gonna back my camera up a little bit. Unfortunately, it's a bit more grainy. I don't have a ton of light yet. It's not super bright out. A little bit more grainy, but I got a little more field of view here. Let's take my ECC upper Love this gun. I gotta have a video on this gun coming up pretty quick here too. This thing is a tank. Oh, with this dimpled barrel, I friggin' love it. Just check this, check that out really quickly there. See those dimples? Oh, I love that. All right, so now, moment of truth. Does it fit on a DD5 lower? The rear pin goes in, or the front pin rather. The rear pin is always the challenge. Uh, yeah, not quite the same geometry. It looks surprisingly like the DD5 
lower is a little larger and this is starting to grind into my upper which I don't like so it uh she's not gonna go similar geometry but not compatible with SR25 SR25 is the same as LMT the LMD MWS three-way platform and very similar it'll work on a stag 10 as well that means that none of those are going to work on the DD5 which is kind of too bad that would have been a kind of a cool little cool little thing uh, actually, it just would have been cool to run this, run this upper on my LMT lower, or sorry, my Knight's lower. I'm assuming, obviously, that's not going to work. I don't know why I'm even trying this. Yeah, no, she does not. She's not compatible. So that answers that. All right, guys, thanks a ton. Check you out next time.